So we started the Akimondo project. We are very grateful to God that since I have been here, a number of people, even states, have taken it on. So, in I get taken in and then when I tell Man, this problem of insecurity. You know, man, no matter. you see those so matter big. They are not easy. And then you the next time. We don't decide. There are never many ways of approaching that problem. And the fully able can do it in the whole of the state. Can develop a kind of anti-grazing, anti-open grazing bill. And we here in our legislative assembly. How many of you? You know me, the good ones. Everybody is from the city. On your own for ya, on your own village, Ashun Waka, Jen Devia, arrested, arrested by them. Are you be acting within the law? Kita ime ya before they mention the police are war. Even if the police don't agree to implement the law, we can enforce it ourselves. And we then our citizens arrest. We can begin to do that. And you have to put this bill. I will send it to every state governor, good governor indeed. We've also sent it to every state house of assembly for the second time. The first time I said it here, only Abia State, the House of Assembly, took it up and uh, passed it. Then their governor refused to sign it. India was not so many pretenders that they don't know what is going on. So we have just sent it again a few months ago. And yesterday we went to everybody. And we are saying, no one who can get a seat in Kwaaka, India don't want to get a seat in Kwaaka. No one who can get a seat in Kwaaka. Whether or whether I want to get a seat in Kwaaka or not. And we can tell them and if they were before he passed on and also one yes. oh, yeah, I think it. we can do that with the Respect I am but I am a decided I am a Who was a I got I that such a, a person and historic individual react to those existential realities of his time, we are not at faith. And that is the thing that single some people have. This is typical of Professor Oswald De Pamela's life. His birth circumstance. His official birthday is March 20th. And he was born in a bush where his printer mother had gone to farm. In two thousand, in eighteen eighty-seven, he was dead. His birth took place during the intense period of the Second World War. His mother, Elizabeth Orasi Ehilefu Nimosu, was a very hardworking and intelligent trader, a stormy patron among her fellow women leaders in the town. His father died while he was just a small kid, and so he was left in the hands of his mother for his upbringing. He remembers the struggle between him and his senior brother, Gordon Nicola, as to who should be in front of the other in the line of during the funeral tribute to his late father. 
His mother carried him in the womb for 12 months, breastfed him for three years before winning him. So you can see where the entire wisdom came from. He nurtured three babies as a babysitter before faith turned him from the part of a trader, which is modern, beloved mother, and he marked him from to start formal schooling. And this was at the point his senior brother had revolted against the idea of himself going to school, dropped his school uniform and ran to the grandma when he came out, protesting and insisting that it was his younger brother, not himself, who should go to uh, the white man's school. Professor Moala is a man of many parts, and each role he remains preeminent. He holds the chieftaincy title in the king of Itumbi, the only chieftaincy title he agreed to take. He is a father and holds a prestigious title of AZG. He initiated his two sons into the AZG title and helped them also initiated it as members of that AZG society. He has done a lot to promote his own culture and civilization, a measure of his commitment to the African cultural revival. Well, we know his uh, educational background and all he did. But what is very important is that because he insisted during that war period, most people were running away. The expatriates teaching ran away, but he insisted that he must finish with philosophy that would turn into Khan and told him, that would turn into Khan's mandate. Those who don't understand. At the graduate school, he specialized in social and political philosophy, where he has his PhD and was supervised by Professor Anthony Quinton, who later became Lord Quinton of Oxford University. He had the following academic honors. He was University Scholar, University of Nigeria, 1964 to 1967. Federal Scholar, Federal Republic, 1973 to 1977. Hiram J. Hill Fellow, Graduate Faculty, New School for Social Research, New York, 1976 to 1977. Visiting Fellow of the USSR Academy of Science, 1986. Commonwealth Fellow, University of Oxford, 1992 to 1993. Some landmark in Dr. Neymar Wallace's career. We have talked, a lot of people have talked about the National Youth Service here, so needless of repeating it. But the simple thing, the summary is that his ideas gave rise to the formation of what people enjoy today as National Youth Service Corps under General Gore. The one that refused to reply our letter we wrote to him. He created the modern house in the way it is. And the, the structure of us is such that you cannot decimate us, no matter how for the government tries to be. So this is the man who did it. In the Constitutional Conference of 1994-1995, that's the only time Nigeria started putting up a lot of things that would have helped us to make this place a federation. And since that time, um, needless to say all the things he did, but the poor sharing principle Federal Character Commission, Revenue Allocation Formula, um, Institutionalization of the Fight Against Corruption, the present population of uh, National Assembly. So he was the um, organizing secretary, the first one of PDP. He had a lot of academic contributions and experiences. Federal State University, University of Abuja, Natural State University, Kogi State University. It was Professor Wana who started philosophy in all those universities. Like I've been saying, those who knew when Codex was formed, we know that the major role of Codex was to get academics 
and scholars into ensuring that they don't leave this society the way they found it. And so they try to make um, this society, I mean, the democracy, they try to ensure democracy in the real sense of it. But we see what we are seeing today, how things are going. There are so many things that the professor has done, I mean, has done, including instituting philosophy as taught courses. Two of the African philosophers as taught courses in any like, university all over the world. It is not just in Nigeria, but what you hear today as African philosophy was created when others in philosophy, there is this thing we call the great debate that read for 20 years where African philosophers were pondering on whether there was anything like African philosophy. Professor Wala has created a department of philosophy, African philosophy, no, not the department of Western philosophy that we do. Well, they have talked about the involvement in India, so needless of going back there. But one thing here is that they believe in the intellectualization of the Igbo man's problem. And today, I read one chance of who, when he wrote a tribute, um, a better wish, rather, to Professor T. U. Man. And one thing he raised is that he is leading an organization that is incorporated in our league, parading a level of intellectuals that are indeed interested in giving Igbo man his pride of place. Professor Wala is a family man because for him, the family is the social and spiritual foundation of human society. He is happily married to a writer, a poet, a lawyer, law, barrister, business, one day, no bioma, benewa, ni, benewa. The family is blessed with children. Ladies and gentlemen, it is on the strength of their move and more that I present to you this self-effacing character, social activist, role model, scholar of scholars, who is first in everything he has ever ventured into, a brave blesser, an icon, an icon of class, a philosopher of philosophers, who has combined most effectively the mandates of scholars, namely to seek truth, disseminate the same truth, and social activism and the incontrovertible founder of the contemporary African philosophy for celebration today at the 78th century. Thank you very much. Uh, it was uh, the man of Marine Ferdinand here, Monomoro. Another day. see the rising sun over there. It's a vision of a future with a radiant highlight, representing the light at the end of the tunnel. A bright future. Our promised land. In his left hand, he holds a microphone, representing all black Africans. After all, he's the father of African philosophy. 
Professor Ozodim Mamara, giving us hope for the future. He represents a totality, a completeness, a wholesomeness, a fullness, and an entirety of the embodiment of today for tomorrow. Tomorrow is represented by the brightness in front of him. Tomorrow we shall go home. That's right.